Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday, where we investigate disasters at sea and the impact that they have on the world today. My name is Eleanor. Today we will be discussing the sinking of MS Explorer, a Liberian cruise ship that sank in the Antarctic Ocean. Before we dive in, we must inform you. The story does include details of a maritime disaster resulting in the loss of a vessel and death that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Please note before I begin that I am not a mariner or expert in the field of maritime history, but I have done my research and will present the information as I understand it and with accurate nautical terminology. In today's episode, I will be including the basics of nautical terminology in the description for anyone who needs it. Today, there will be some terms in the Swedish and Finnish languages, in which I am not fluent, but I will do my best to give accurate pronunciations. MS Explorer passes through many owners and three name changes through her career. She was commissioned as the MS Lindblad Explorer by Lars Erik Lindblad, a Swedish-American pioneer of what was called exotic expedition tours. Essentially, this is even more exotic than a vacation would be and is usually in places that aren't cruised too often, like Antarctica. An MS Explorer would trace the same path as Ernest Shackleton's ship Endurance had in 1915 through the Southern Ocean. If you are a fan of Shipwreck Sunday, then you know we also did an episode on Shackleton's Endurance. If you didn't catch that episode, I'll give you a brief summary. Endurance and her crew were on an expedition of the Antarctic for research purposes when she was landlocked in a field of ice flows. After over a year of being stuck in the ice, the ship finally foundered with no casualties and Shackleton led his crew to rescue. And this was the path that MS Explorer would take in 2007. If it had gone so poorly in 1915 for Ernest Shackleton, why would the MS Explorer follow in his footsteps? We will answer that question after we go over her service history leading up to the disaster. MS Explorer was built in 1969 in the Udenkaupungen Talaka shipyard located in Usikaupunki, Finland. This ship, similar to many ships, was built to stay afloat even if two of her watertight compartments were flooded, but no more than these two. Originally, she was in the Finnish-Swedish ice class of 1C, which is weaker than 1A, which she was upgraded to at an unknown date. She was the first custom-built expeditionary cruise ship ever built and was 239 feet long. She had a beam of 46 feet wide and a draft of 14 feet and 7 inches tall. She displaced 2,398 tons, being propelled by two diesel engines driving a single variable pitch four-bladed propeller. Her average service speed was 12.5 knots. She averaged 54 crew members, including her captain, and had a maximum capacity of 104 passengers, making cruises on the ship much less densely populated and more exclusive than most cruise ships. The first incident in MS Explorer's career happened on February 11, 1972, when she ran aground near La Plaza Point, Antarctica. Lindblad was among the many passengers who were rescued by the Chilean Navy, the ship being towed to Buenos Aires, Argentina first and then off to Christiansand, Norway for repairs. The ship ran aground yet again on Christmas Day in 1979 off of Wienke Island in the Antarctic, the 70 passengers and 34 crew members yet again being saved by the Chilean Navy, this time by their Antarctic transport Piotr Pardo. They left behind the captain and 21 crew to await the tugboat. The Chilean Navy were really quite the saving grace for the explorer. In 1984, MS Explorer was the first ship to ever navigate the Northwest Passage, which is the sea route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through the Arctic Ocean. When an Argentine supply ship hit a rock ledge of Anvers Island, Antarctica, in 1989, MS Explorer was involved in the rescue of the crew. She had a lot of firsts, also being the first ship to circumnavigate James Ross Island in 1988. Also in 1988, she was claimed to be the first ship besides a riverboat to sail 80 miles above Iquitos, Peru, to where the Marignon and Ucayali rivers joined to become the Amazon River. She was also depicted on two postage stamps issued in South Georgia and one in the Falkland Islands, both in the Southern Ocean. She gained the nickname Little Red Ship for her red and white appearance, with her hull being red and superstructure in Arctic white. Other than that, we don't have much on MS Explorer's career. Like many ships covered on this show, the sinking seems to be where the bulk of the information lies. But she did have a career all the way from her conception in 1969 until her sinking in 2007. And with such few incidents to report, it is safe to say her career was rather successful. Though she was passed from company to company, which can be common in the business of cruising, with ships being sold, chartered, and bought all the time. 
From 1969 to 1972, she was owned by K-S, A-S, Explorer and Company out of Oslo, Norway, with that also being her port of registry. Her port of registry changed then to Panama City, Panama in 1972, when she went to the Swedish-American line based out of Gothenburg, Sweden, who owned her from 1972 to 1980. She was then sold to Lindblad Swire Cruises based out of Panama City in 1980 until 1982, when she was sold again to Salen AB based out of Stockholm, Sweden, and they owned her until 1983. From 1983 to 1985, she was owned and operated by Ferry Services Curacao and NV out of Willemstad, Netherlands, Antilles. After 1985 and up until 1992, she was yet again sold to Discoverer Raderie GmbH based in Germany, her port of registry changing in 1989 for the last time to Monrovia, Liberia, and Africa. Explorer Shipping, based in Monrovia, owned her from 1992 to 2003. Kairos Shipping from Monaco, owning her from 2003 to 2004. And finally, Gap Shipping out of the Bahamas took the reins from 2004 until the sinking in 2007. And yes, that is a lot of companies. It reminds me of the Queen Mary, who also went through a lot of different owners and operators over the years. MS Explorer departed on her final voyage on November 11, 2007 from Ushua, Argentina. She was going on a 19-day cruise run by Gap called the Spirit of Shackleton, intending to retrace the final voyage of Shackleton's endurance through the Drake Passage. The Drake Passage is known for having typically stormy weather and rough seas, as well as pack ice that can be dangerous to ships, which was the case for the endurance. They visited the Falklands Islands and South Georgia first, similar to Endurance, before departing toward Antarctica. On November 23, 2007, the unthinkable happened. In the Bransfield Strait, close to King George Island in the Southern Ocean, the MS Explorer struck an iceberg. The iceberg struck the starboard side of the ship and tore a gash in her hull, allowing thousands of tons of water to rush inside and quickly flood. This is eerily similar to the Titanic disaster that happened 95 years earlier, also striking an iceberg on the starboard side and tearing a gash in the hull. Some passengers reported hearing a loud bang when the iceberg struck, although some others reported that there hadn't been any noticeable impact outside of the normal crunching of ice. Again, very similar to what the survivors of Titanic reported. One passenger reported having seawater flood their cabin around 3 a.m. coordinated universal time, meaning the impact happened right around that time. There are some reports that stated the ship had drifted into the iceberg on the starboard side while the crew was assessing the damage done from the initial impact. At 4.24 in the morning, a mayday call was sent out from the Explorer and quickly the rescue coordination began from the Prefectura Naval Argentina, the Argentinian equivalent of the Coast Guard, and the Chilean Navy Center for Search and Rescue. From Chile, the icebreaker Almirante Oscar Viel was dispatched, including nearby commercial ships. This included the Norwegian Coastal Express ship MS Nordnor, the MN Ueshua, and the MS National Geographic Endeavor, also operated by Lindblad Expeditions. As the Explorer filled with water, her captain and crew kept level heads and got the passengers ready to abandon ship. By 7.30 in the morning, all 91 passengers, 9 tour guides, and 54 crew were in the lifeboats, lowering away to the southern ocean below. An interesting thing to note is that the passengers and crew were all from 14 different countries, and that surely posed a language barrier, but they still managed to all safely get to their muster stations. They drifted in the southern ocean for around 5 hours until the MS Nord Nor arrived on the scene around 10 a.m., picking up the survivors and being escorted to the Chilean Fray Montalva station on King George Island. There, they were airlifted by C-130 Hercules transport aircraft of the Chilean Air Force to Punta Arenas, Chile. The survivors were taken in two different flights, one on Saturday, November 24th, and one on Sunday, the 25th. Approximately 70 passengers were taken to Uruguay's Artigas base instead of Punta Arenas. By 7 p.m. on November 23, 2007, MS Explorer slipped beneath the waves and sank roughly 1,968 to 3,707 feet to the bottom of the Bransfield Strait. This was around 20 hours after the initial impact, and it's a good thing it took that long. It gave everyone plenty of time to disembark the ship. Explorer was like most ships in that she could withstand one watertight compartment completely flooded, but could not make it if there was imperfect sealing or gash across multiple compartments like there was in her case. Gap reported that there was apparently a crack in the hull in addition to the hole created by the iceberg, but it's unclear if it spanned multiple compartments. The Argentine Navy later reported in a statement that, quote, the damage sustained had to have had extended along the length of the vessel from cabins 308 to 314 for at least a distance of 3.6 meters or 11.8 feet, and in all likelihood had punctured and sliced holes along the shell plating. 
Oddly enough, in an article published on December 8, 2007, experts were consulted and considered Explorer to be, quote, perfect for ice navigation, and claimed that the explanation for the sinking, quote, doesn't add up, and that, quote, essential pieces of the story are missing. I don't know if that theory truly holds water, but I had to put it out there. Of course, there's always an inquiry into sinkings, and it's a good thing too. Sometimes we learn the cause of the sinking is entirely different than originally thought. The investigation into the sinking of MS Explorer was performed by the Liberian Bureau of Maritime Affairs, and they released their report in April of 2009. The report places the blame firmly on Captain Banked Wyman and his decision to enter the ice field based upon the information and knowledge available to him at the time as the main reason for Explorer becoming so damaged and eventually foundering. Quote, he was under the mistaken impression that he was encountering first-year ice, which in fact, as the Chilean Navy report indicated, was much harder land ice. You might be asking yourself, what is first-year ice? It is floating ice of no more than one year's growth developing from young ice. Typically, it is between 1 to 6.5 feet thick. Passengers also reported seeing red paint scrapes on the passing ice less than 30 minutes prior to when the flooding was first reported, which is yet another indication that Explorer was passing through hard and compact ice. Captain Wyman was familiar with the cold Baltic Sea and the ice he experienced there, but he was naive when it came to Antarctic waters. The report's investigating officer failed to convince Gap that it was their responsibility to retrieve the ship's voyage data recorder, which is essentially a ship's version of a black box. This was after the captain failed to make sure the VDR was transferred from the Explorer to MS Nordnor, even though he was reminded to do so. The report also found that Gap should have had, quote, the required safety training and documents to see Fairs, given the staff, quote, serve the function of crew members. Although the report is harsh on forgetting the VDR, it does praise the captain and crew for effectively organizing and evacuating the passengers, and they acknowledge that lives were saved because of the calm actions of the crew and captain. The passengers, captain, and crew all moved on with their lives, and we are sure the experience of a sinking ship sticks with them to this day, despite the fact that the rescue was successful and everyone was saved. As for MS Explorer herself, she still rests at the bottom of the Southern Ocean. She is the most recent vessel to have foundered due to an iceberg, but she most certainly won't be the last. If there's anything to be learned from the situation, it is that ice is incredibly dangerous and unpredictable. All precautions that can be taken have to be in order to keep the vessel and everyone aboard as safe. This episode hopes to keep the disaster of the MS Explorer relevant and to honor everyone who survived the incident. Thank you for tuning in to Shipwreck Sunday. If you like this episode and are listening on YouTube, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you liked this episode and are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, please subscribe for more content and leave us a five-star review as it does help us reach more listeners like you. Check out Speedforce Media on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Shipwreck Sunday. Tune in next Sunday for the story of MTS Oceanos, a cruise ship that sank off the coast of South Africa. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.